Hello and welcome, RC Shim in the hangar. Artillery X3 Plus, printed manual. <laughs> A tiny bit of high speed PLA, Sparkle, screws and stuff. The filament sensor, spool holder, the control unit, and the PIY sheet. Bad. I like this. Oh, it looks nice. Stability rods. Ooh, it's massive. So the packaging, nicely done. The tray, and you cannot grab this tray. So the screams, they, they built this on purpose in a way it's shitty, so that you can say, ah, I print this myself because I need. You cannot open this. Power supply, briefly, just, just sliding in there. But I can tell you this is serious hardware. It's very heavy. Make and sure the section materials when screwing the tightly lock it. I don't understand your English, guys. Uh, neither do I understand your German, so... 100% <laughs> the same, the one that Credit uses on the K1. So, But I really love those things. Those little screw bags have labels on them. Makes your work way easier. Screw on the filament holder. Now I will install those structural rods. Of course you can make those things longer by unscrewing them. So we need to find out the right length. Spaces on the inside between the case and the rod. Short screws on top, longer screws on the bottom. Just make them long enough. And now the rigidity. Mount the filament sensor. And sturdy solution. Everything on this printer feels, yeah, it's also metal, feels quite nice. The only gripe I have though is a lot of different type of screws. Quite sure that this should be able to move, I guess. I think it should move, move freely. Those and this one. Stepper motor, stepper motor. Maybe it's a good, good idea to leave this away anyways, but yeah, we will see. Display and display mount. Where is the... Oh, the display mount, if you search for it, it's magnetic and it's already in the back. Protective screens, we get rid of them. The screen to body ratio though... Eh, it's meant to go up there and there. Yeah, that's, that's a nice solution. They could have went with rounded edges if you hold it in the hand. It's not really 100% fair. For my first prints I will use the last remains of my old filament here. Booting it up. Oh, and the menu is already there. It looks like it's really, really fast. And booting up. Response time of the display is satisfying. Test file. Yeah, we can print an 18 minute bench, of course. Okay, it looks like I discovered the first little bug of the user interface. I went into the print menu and you can, of course, select models like yeah, the 18 minute benchy. But I'm not ready to print yet because I need to load my filament, so cancel. Try to go back outside to the main menu, but there's no way back. There's no way back. We're stuck here. Seriously? Okay, so there is a, a reset button <laughs> and then you are back into the menu. So with PLA, I already told him to preheat. It's now on 200 and I think we are ready to feed the material. I think that's how it works. Ah! <laughs> he could have given, given me some instructions on how to do this. He's homing the axis now. Now it's feeling okay. The nozzle is already drooling yet. Nice, nice. Should we level? 
I think we should do a bed level. Yeah. It gives you the instructions here on how to do the bed leveling. Fortunately, we still need a piece of paper for this. Okay, I just read this one page here about the bed leveling, manual leveling. First point, I can move the paper to the second point. Make it so that you only feel a bit of friction. So the center point is still quite ugly. But we will have to try it with this. And now we do some auto leveling. I like, and it looks like it does a lot of mesh points. Like 25, maybe, or more. Auto leveling finished. Okay, time for the first benchy. I do the fast benchy, but with the crappy filament. This already didn't work like perfect on the K1, so I expect some under extrusion. What I like though uh, is that he moves the print head over the waste bin. If you want to start printing fast, go ahead and the first thing you do is heat up the bed. It's quite consistent, one or two degrees off. 57, we will be there in a second. It's a bit of a bummer that it takes so long that the bed heats up, but come on, start, 60-60. I think it's trying to wipe the nozzle. Did it work? We will see. Looks okay. Let's go to speed now. Oh, wow. That's a large and a fast bed thing, I can tell. Quite impressive in terms of speed. Artillery X3 plus sheer size. Look at my lamp though, how fast it unwinds. By the amount it shakes, I almost feel that it falls off the edge of the spoon holder. And we might want to design a better spoon holder. Challenge accepted. It looks great. Okay, while well, the printer is still doing its 18-minute uh, job, 10 minutes for heating up the bed. I'm quite impressed by like 1 hour and 44 minutes around since I started unboxing this. So in under 2 hours you can expect your first print with not a lot of knowledge needed. I mean the manual takes you step by step through the installation process, not expecting the best quality. But I can compare it to the K1 Creality printer that I also print and kind of see how, how they compare. For so little money, so large of a printer can do and is it worth it? I mean the obvious downside of this thing is it has no Wi-Fi, no LAN connectivity, so you cannot just go to a web browser and start printing from there. Still the old way with inserting a SD card and start printing locally. The number one reason why I wanted this one is yeah, the large print size. Yeah, the little screen is quite handy in terms of what information it will tell us. 8 mm, 825, 0.25 layer height. But yeah, speed is impressive. Curious to see how this looks when it's finished. Yeah, there is some sort of under extrusion. And especially on such large printers, you want decent speeds because large objects would take forever the other way. Okay, the quality though. Don't see any text at all at the bottom. It means the first layer is a bit too dense. Oh man, still such a nice and clean build plate. <laughs> That's a pure luxury. And they also got these little knobs, which is a good idea. Yay! We really have something in the perch bin. <laughs>
So 21 minutes for this Benchy. I think the K1 was faster, it was really a 17 minute Benchy. These are the benches from the K1 from Creality. First benchy here is with the high speed filament in the 17 minutes. This was an extruder PLA NX2, but an old one, and it's not used to this fast sprint speeds, or it's just maybe too moist because it under extrudes here. Also in the fast speed settings, definitely looking worse. This was then the higher quality, like 37 or 40 ish minutes. Normal print speed. Yeah. You clearly can read the text below because it's a flat surface. And then in comparison, this is from the Ender 3 and also in a slow speed. There's the new one in a gray filament. We see some ghosting here from the hole. Uh, this edge looks a bit ugly. We have zero stringing issues with this PLA here. For my taste, it looks decent enough. But if you want really good print quality, you just dial down the speed a bit. Standard PLA and fast settings. The white is the K1, the gray is the new artillery. Ah. On the K1, there are a few imperfect layers. Okay, this is the 35 minute Spenchy. Ah, okay, it's. Almost too easy. So in the center, the first layer is quite dense. But I noted this during the bed leveling. There's a little bit of a bulge in the middle, I guess. Yes, yeah, so on the left side is the slower printed benchy, the 35 minutes benchy, ringing in the hull. Tiny bit of ghosting around those edges. And this overhang in the back is a bit messed up. So there is a little bit of mishap inside there. Fast versus slow, on totally stock settings, nothing tuned, no input shaping tuned, no linear advance. It's totally usable. Okay, you cannot print all the way to the outside. I mean, you can, but patch line is a bit close to the edge. And also in the middle, it's uh, that level is not good. Even though it just made. Uh, Auto bed level before this print. Okay, so my first thought was printing an IKEA pegboard, which is actually a pretty good uh, first layer test. And I adjusted the set offset during the print, so some of those overalls are better. Some of the holes, some of them look really squished, like in the, in the center. This is maybe the largest first layer I ever printed. How this comes out? One and a half hours into the print. It's all fine. Some portions of the plate show these ripples. Kinda concerned if my filament will be enough. Quite long print, an overnight print here. Six hours. This Scadi's pegboard actually looks nice. What do you say? The top layer doesn't look too bad. I printed this now with 150 millimeters of speed. Yeah, on the bottom side, however, one addition to my findings, this thing is a light. <laughs> it's amazing. And it's so well hidden in the, in the gantry on top that I didn't see it <laughs> initially. And of course you can turn on and off the LED. Low wind or strong wind, <laughs> as you prefer. The quick and easy fix to the tray not being grippable is ugly marks. So that it's grippy. So next I will get a bigger nozzle for it in the future. Because bigger prints and a 0.6 nozzle. I wanted to change the standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Which is a volcano style nozzle as I've learned. I found these replacement nozzle replacement nozzles for quite cheap. A different head. But it's okay, you can install them anyways. And it's actually way better with this larger screw head and not the small one. This is a 0 0.6. But today I installed even a 0 0.8 millimeters. There is a small gap in front. I couldn't screw it in further, but need a new set offset and that's it. I also applied some on 
thermal paste from CPUs, but it's rated at 200 degrees. I'm not sure if this will work the best, but yeah, that's what I had available. While changing the nozzle, I broke the old thermistor, this thing here. So I ordered new thermistor, which had different connector on the back. That's the one we need. This heat brake is the same. That's the thing that screws onto the extruder part. So we need to keep using this. Screwed in and held in place by this screw here. And that's the heating element, a ceramic heating element. And all of that is held in place with this clamp. Thermistor. Initially I thought it's screwed in or really it is just stuck in there in the thermal paste and then held in place. It just needs to feel the temperature to control this heat block. And it's holding there in place with this clamp. Even the silicon cover fits the broader head. Installed everything back there. We just have to install this cover here that they found from Anchor. <laughs> And then I will do another bench here or something with it. I've not been printing with this RT for a month now or so, because I broke the damn nozzle. There you go, this counts already as a success. So we found the 8mm nozzle prints. And I will put this bench here. Can I do something? This helps you to estimate or to measure how fast your combination of nozzle, filament, Super interesting to watch him lay down these fat lines of 0.4 millimeters of height each. So the prints can be faster from this fact alone. And now we want to find out how much speed we can turn. Hyper PLA white. If it goes in hyper speed mode, this spool will be empty soon. <laughs> And I think the third speed is already on the limit a bit. The first and second five millimeters are fine. The third stack here is a bit ugly. Yeah, and this I think we can, we can stop printing because we already see on this layer that it gets chunky. This is a good representation. The first segment, it was 19 cubic millimeters, already quite fast. The second, 23, also not a problem. C, 26.8 cubics are already a bit troublesome and 30 is too much for, probably for the hot end. Maybe this hyper PLA could go faster. And that's why I love this test. The link will be in the description, of course, to this webpage. It lets you generate the G-code, you enter just the nozzle diameter, the line height and a few parameters and it works quite well to generate the G-code for you. Thanks a lot for watching this review, Creality K1. Check out my two videos, they are already out there about the K1. Of course, like and share them, uh, subscribe if you're in for more 3D content or for drone content on my channel. I can promise you that I will always tell you the truth about those products because I don't really need to make a lot of money selling stuff with affiliate links. It's just a nice bonus to be able to freely buy products that I want to test for you that I don't get otherwise. So that all being said, thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.